Hey guys, welcome back to Vlogmas. Thanks again for joining me today. I have brought you on another adventure. We are in a brand new place that I've never been before. You've probably noticed that I'm doing lots of traveling recently and there is a reason behind that. It is looking like at least one of the cats will be coming to live with me next year. So it will be a little more difficult for me to travel. I'll have to find a babysitter for them. So in the meantime, while I have that freedom, I'm trying to tick off all the things on my bucket list that I want to see in Japan. And today we get to do that. I am in Kinosaki Onsen. I'll be spending the next few days experiencing some beautiful locations throughout Hyogo Prefecture, starting off here in Kinosaki Onsen, which is easy to get to from major cities like Kyoto, Kobe, or Osaka. Next, we'll head to the historic castle towns of Izushi and Tamba Sasayama. And finally, we'll finish off in Itami. All of these spots are close to each other and easily accessed. Our final location of Itami is super close to both Kobe and Osaka, as well as the Osaka International Airport, so you have easy access to Tokyo as well. I had heard the name Kinosaki Onsen before. I knew it was a really famous onsen, and that's all I knew, but I found out that it's actually a whole area. It's like this entire traditional looking, super picturesque street filled with a bunch of different onsen baths. And how it works is you just kind of wander the street, you chill, you eat some food, and you can just go in and out of all the different onsen and test out a bunch of different baths. When I checked into my hotel, she gave me this badge. So if you stay at any of the hotels in the area, you get this little pass, and this is so that you can go in and out of all the different baths as much as you want for free. If you came here as a day visitor and didn't stay in a hotel, then you would pay a fee to enter the baths. So it is currently 4.31 p.m. I think I'm gonna try and make a reservation at a really nice restaurant that I saw online. It looks like it's a little pricey. It's a fancy one, but they do the local cuisine of Hyogo, the prefecture that we're in right now. And I wanna try something local to this area. So fingers crossed I can get a spot there for tonight. And then after dinner, um, I'll bring you guys on a stroll around the area so you can see how pretty it is. Currently it's raining outside, but according to the weather report, that will stop at about 8 p.m. So hopefully when I'm all finished dinner, it'll be cleared up outside. In the meantime, let's brew some tea. The lovely lady working at the front desk brought in this tea set for me so I could relax a bit before I go out for dinner. It's so cute. If you haven't stayed in a Japanese hotel before, I highly recommend it just because these are the kind of things you wouldn't get if you stay in a regular business hotel. It's really an experience that you can only get here in Japan. It looks like everything's contained to one main street basically and just a couple side streets. So even though I'm only here for one night, I feel like I should be able to cover most of it. And tomorrow morning I was able to get filming permission inside one of the onsen before they open up for the public. <laughs> so I have to be there at like 6 a.m. But I'm pretty excited that I get to show it to you guys. It's one of the cooler looking onsen in the area. So that should be fun. Good news, I was able to get a reservation at the restaurant and it looks like the rain is chilling out a bit. It's just some really light showers at the moment, so it shouldn't be too bad out there. <laughs> I came downstairs to put my shoes on and I just realized now that they created a lantern for me because I'm staying at their hotel tonight. They have names of all the customers. How cool is that? Oh, the town looks so pretty at nighttime. Kinosaki is famous for these willow trees that you see lining the river. They're so gorgeous and there's actually a part down the road that's filled with sakura trees. So in the spring, it's also really beautiful. I can see why walking around here at nighttime is popular. It's such a nice atmosphere. This is the restaurant I chose, Sanpo Nishimuraya. I asked the hotel staff what they thought of it and they're like, oh yeah, that's a nice restaurant. You'll really like it. You guys, they just sat me down to my seat and it's literally just to be in the restaurant. 
This is the bonus to being able to travel on weekdays. There are so fewer people around. It's really nice. This place is gorgeous and it smells amazing because out in the front they have a little gift shop where they sell incense burners and incense. It smells so good. So I noticed on the pamphlet they gave me that there were many vinegar drink shops around the area and I just asked the staff here and apparently vinegar is a specialty of the Kinosaki area so I ordered a rose hip and apple vinegar drink for dinner. Mm. It's like a sweet apple juice and apple cider vinegar. So the first dish I ordered are these roasted local vegetables that you saw the chef grilling right in front of me. They smell very smoky. They've sliced little markings into the carrot so that it's softer. That's one tasty carrot. They've just brought out the rice I ordered. I had no idea it was gonna be this fancy. There are 38 different types of rice in this bowl of rice. That's like a couple grains of each. <laughs> That's insane. Oh wow, that's good. I'm not gonna be able to go back to eating normal rice now. And they also brought out an assortment of different pickled vegetables that I can eat with the rice. I don't treat myself to a fancy restaurant very often, so I feel very spoiled to get to eat this delicious fancy food. It's so yummy. That was a really nice dinner. I noticed on the way back that everybody was wandering around the town wearing their yukata from the hotel, so I thought I would pop back into my room and change into the yukata that they provide for you. Oh, they set up my futon for me while I was away for dinner. Oh, cute, and they give you some layers to put over top so that you'll be warm enough out there in the winter weather. Awesome, well, I'm gonna change into that. All right, I've got my yukata on. I don't know if I did it properly. I was hoping the staff would be down at the first floor so I could ask her <laughs> if I had tied it correctly, but she wasn't there. But I think it's okay, and it's quite warm, so I've got three layers on. This is just your standard yukata that you'll get when you go to a yokan, and then this is kind of like just the top half. It's pretty thick material, so it keeps you pretty warm. And then this overcoat. Yeah, I'm pretty warm considering it's December and I'm outside in sandals, so <laughs> it's pretty toasty yukata. As you walk through the town, you can hear everybody's wooden sandals clicking on the ground. It's pretty cool. So most of the shops are already closed for the evening, but I found a wagashi shop that's open. I love looking at them. They're so pretty. I think this shop is famous for their strawberry daifuku. It looks so yummy. Karinto flavored manju. I want to try one. I hope they have some left. They look like they make them fresh here. Let's go inside and see if they have any. Here they are, and it looks like they've got two different flavors. There's one with red bean paste in the middle and one with chestnut. Kinosaki is also famous for crab. There's tons of crab products. If you go to the restaurants, there's tons of crab dishes. Unfortunately, lots of the shops that I wanted to pop into are closed for the evening. So for now, I'm going to head back to the hotel and try out that karinto manju. So I showed you guys karinto during the journey across Japan. It's not the most visually appealing snack, but I promise you they're really delicious. So I bet this karinto manju is equally as delicious. Oh, it smells so good. And inside is red bean paste. Mmm. Oh, it's so nice. 
I'm going to bring a box of these home with me. It tastes exactly how it smells. It's like if you glaze something in brown sugar and then roast it, it's got like a toasted brown sugar taste to it. All right, guys, I'm going to finish my delicious carinto manju. Then I'm going to head to bed because I need to be up super early tomorrow so that we can go and film the onsen. So I will see you in the morning. Good night. Good morning, you guys. I am just waking up. It is five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I've just poured myself a tea in hopes that it will help me wake up here. I am not a morning person. I'm certainly not a 5 a.m. person. But I'm really looking forward to this onsen this morning because it's really chilly today. Last night was pretty warm. Walking around the town, I actually didn't feel too cold wearing this yukata outside. But this morning, I'm starting to feel it. So it's going to be so nice to get into the hot bath. All right, I've arrived at the onsen. I've rented a towel that I can use for filming. Normally, you wouldn't wear one in the bath, of course. So the onsen that I can bring you guys inside today is Ichi no Yu and it's probably the most famous onsen in Kinosaki area. So they have quite a large bath inside, but this is what I wanted to show you guys. How cool is this? They call this the cave bath. It really does feel like you're inside a cave. Let's test the temperature of the water. Hope it's not too hot. Oh, it's perfect. So the seven baths around the Kinosaki area that you can enter in are known as Sotoyu, the kanji for outside, and then bath. The onsens that they have inside of the hotels are known as Uchiyu. So if you're coming from outside and you're not staying at a hotel, you will just wander around and enter the different Sotoyu baths. But like me, if you stayed at a ryokan, you can also go in the Uchiyu. The temperature of the water is just perfect. I've been in some onsen where the water was so hot that I couldn't get in past my knees. Like it was scalding. <laughs> the temperatures that Japanese people could withstand always surprise me. So whenever it's a temperature like this, I get really excited. <laughs> Probably the most important fact that I'm going to tell you today is that every single one of the onsen in the Kinosaki area here are tattoo friendly. You can come in if you have tattoos, which is super rare. Normally you can only go into the private baths, the ones that you reserve a time for and just go in alone. But here you can enter all of the public baths, even if you have tattoos. So that's really good news for visitors coming from outside of Japan because many of us do have tattoos. All right, I've only got about 10 more minutes until they open this onsen up to the public. So I'm going to enjoy the alone time for 10 more minutes and I'll see you guys afterwards. And that concludes my two day adventure here in Kinosaki Onsen. It is such a beautiful little town. If you guys find yourself in the Kyoto or Kobe area, it's definitely worth the trip up here. It's definitely got a certain Showa vibe to it. I think you guys would really enjoy it. I will see you guys right back here again tomorrow for some more adventures. I'm off to make soba now. I'm really bad at it. I'm hoping this time I can finally get it right, but the past three times I've done it, it's just been a disaster. So come back here again tomorrow and see how my soba turns out. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.